Hello, and welcome back to Neural Data Science. I'm Professor Aaron Newman, and today we're going to talk more about plotting in Matplotlib. Our previous lesson, Plotting, covered an introduction to Matplotlib and generating plots. Today we're going to go a little deeper and get into what might at first seem like kind of a, a fairly technical explanation, especially for early on in your learning. But it's actually quite important, especially when you start going online and looking for help on Matplotlib, because there's two fundamentally different ways of generating plots in Matplotlib. So we're going to open the lesson that's titled proc underscore versus underscore OO and talk about procedural versus object oriented plotting in Matplotlib. So the questions we're going to address is what is the difference between the command plt.plot and the command ax.plot? You'll see both of these in different online help forums. Why are there two different ways of generating plots with matplotlib? And why do various plot commands I copied from Stack Overflow not work? Usually the answer to the last question is because you're combining elements of plt.plot commands, which is what we call procedural, and elements of ax.plot, uh, which is what we call object-oriented plotting in matplotlib. So our learning objectives are to understand the differences between procedural and object-oriented programming, understand and recognize procedural versus object-oriented uses of matplotlib, and then appropriately choose between and use these two different approaches. One of the most confusing things about learning matplotlib is that it actually supports two fundamentally different ways of approaching plotting. Uh, these are procedural and object-oriented. Python itself is what's called a object-oriented language. However, MATLAB is a functional or procedural language. So although we're talking about it today in the context of plotting with matplotlib, procedural and object-oriented approaches are fundamentally very different approaches to building a programming language and writing in different programming languages. So we'll talk a little bit about that today but uh, only in the context of, of matplotlib. Procedural programming is based around variables, data structures, and procedures. In other words, ways of operating on variables and on data structures. In contrast, object-oriented programming is based around what we call objects. Objects can have both data and methods in them. For example, pandas data frames are objects. They contain data, but they also have a set of methods that can operate on the data. So for example, df.plot, df.merge. We saw that earlier for lists as well and for dictionaries. Lists and dictionaries in Python have methods. Those are essentially functions that are written specifically for those data types or objects, and they apply only to them. So in Python, being an object-oriented language, in general, you'll see that data structures are written as objects and they have specific methods that apply only to those objects. And all of those methods are sort of defined within Python's definition of what a list is. In contrast, in procedural programming, you don't have that. You have different functions and they operate on data. There's a lot more to talk about there if we wanted to talk about the difference between procedural and object-oriented programming in general. But for now, that's sort of a simple explanation that'll move us towards the sort of more pragmatic topic of how do we recognize these two different things and work with them and what's the difference between them? So we're going to cover both procedural and object-oriented approaches to plotting with matplotlib in this lesson. But in general, I recommend using an object-oriented approach, and I've tried to use that moving forward in the different lessons that you'll see, because this is consistent with the way Python is written as an object-oriented language, and it's the method recommended by most people, including matplotlib's official documentation. But again, you'll see the procedural approach in lots of examples you'll find, especially online, so it's worth understanding it and knowing how to identify and make sure you're not trying to mix and match the two in ways that, that just don't match. Okay, so the procedural approach uses the matplotlib module pyplot, so that matplotlib.pyplot command that we learned about earlier. Modules in Python packages are a way of organizing functions into kind of conceptual groupings. So you can think of modules as subdirectories in the package's main folder. So matplotlib.pyplot contains a variety of functions and one of them that we use a lot is matplotlib.pyplot.plot. But because that's a lot to type, the convention, as we've seen in the last lesson, is to write import matplotlib as plt. So give it, sorry, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So rather than having to type matplotlib.pyplot, we only have to type plt every, one, every time we want to run a command uh, from this module. Okay, so I'm going to run that. CoCalc will start up. And then we can use the plt alias followed by the name of pyplot functions, like plot, in order to generate plots. So I'm going to define two variables, x equals range 0, 10, 
So that will create a variable x that is a range of values from 0 to 10. Remember, range creates a range. It doesn't actually create a list or a set of values. But it turns out that matplotlib can take a range and turn that into a sequence of values. So in this case, our range is going to go from 0 up to, but not including 10. And we're going to define y as a second variable that actually contains the same, so range 0, 10. And then I'll run plt.plot, so I'm invoking matplotlib.pyplot.plot, and as the argument, I'm going to give it x and y. So x will be plotted on the x-axis and y on the y-axis. And this generates a plot, and you can see that up at the top we get that sort of garbagey thing. talked about that before, so routinely we should get in the habit of using uh, the plt.plot command. So I'm going to type this again. It's the same as above. We don't need to redefine x and y because those were already defined. And then the plt.show function, which will show it without that text at the top. Okay. So anyway, plt.plot, give it x and y, it generates a plot. We can use additional functions to modify this plot, like adding a title. So we saw this before. And I'm going over it again because the way you do this in the procedural approach as opposed to the object-oriented approach is actually different. So just a refresher on what the procedural approach looks like first. So we can again run plt.plot x comma y, but then we can add a title by saying plt.title and then in quotes a perfect correlation. So you can see here I'm running a command, another function in the matplotlib.pyplot library or module called title. And then plt.show, and now we've got a title. So in other words, in the procedural approach, we run a series of functions from the pyplot module, like plt.plot and then plt.title. And all of these things sequentially add to the plot that's been created. And then ultimately we run plt.show in order to actually see that. Okay, so that's the procedural approach. In the object-oriented approach, we do things a little differently. So first we create a plot object and we assign the result of doing that to two variables, fig and x. And we do this using the plt.subplots function. So we're still running a, a pyplot function. In this case, it's called .subplots. And this creates a figure that we can then plot into and we use the subplots command because that allows us to create either a single figure with a single plot in it or a figure that has multiple plots in it. So multiple different panels showing different data, different graphs and that sort of thing. So it seems a little confusing because we're starting by producing only one plot to use something called subplots, but we just get in the habit of using that because it's more flexible moving forward. So by convention, we assign the outputs of plt.subplots to fig and x. And we haven't seen this before, but this is a Python convention that if a function generates two outputs, you can assign those outputs to two different variable names by listing them separated by a comma before the equal sign. So the first output of subplots is going to go to fig, and that's actually a pointer to the figure itself. And then the second one is to x, which is the axes within the figure. I'll explain what those mean in a minute, but just so you understand for now what those two different things are. So fig comma x equals plt dot subplots. And we don't need to give subplots any arguments. By default, it will just generate a figure of a particular size with a single subplot within it. And then ax dot plot x comma y. So right here, you should notice we're running a different command. We're not running plt dot plot, we're running ax dot plot. And on the surface, they both kind of look the same, right? Because they're both dot plot x comma y. But critically, what's different is before the dot, plt is a Python module. So in doing plt dot plot, we're invoking a function called plot. In running ax dot plot, ax is a variable that we defined above. And as I said, ax is the axis. So you can think of a figure as kind of the piece of paper that you're plotting onto and then the axis as a set of x and y axes that you're actually plotting data into. And that's why we can have more than one set of axes within a single figure, because you can have one piece of paper and on that you have multiple different uh, figures. Obviously, we're not using paper here, just a metaphor. So fundamentally, even though this looks very similar, this is a method that applies to axes objects in matplotlib rather than a function. And so at the moment, we only have one axis so we're plotting to that, but when we create subplots, 
we can actually index this as like AX0, AX1, etc to reference the different subplots because it's a variable and we're using this dot plot method as opposed to the plt dot plot function. And that's kind of the fundamental difference between the procedural and object oriented approaches. And likewise, when we want to set a title up above, we did plt dot title, right? So that was another function within the pyplot module called title. To add a title when we're using the object oriented approach to plotting, we have to give it the object and then the set title method. So again, the object is AX, the axis that we're plotting to, dot, and then the method is set title. So instead of just title, it's set underscore title. And then the same title, a perfect correlation, and then plt dot show. So that part, we always run the same. That's a, a function, the show function. All right. And this plot looks exactly like the procedural one. So at the end of the day, whether you generate a plot through the procedural approach or the object oriented approach, typically you get the same looking result. It's just how you got there that was different. Okay, so here I sort of explain what I just said above about what the difference is between the plt.plot function and the ax.plot method. But just to make that point, if I, instead of saying fig comma ax, which I say is convention, but it's not required, I can generate any variable name to assign the outputs of plot.subplots to. So my underscore lawn underscore figure underscore name, comma, my underscore lawn underscore axes underscore name equals. So I'm just, again, giving it two variables to put the output into plt.subplots. And then my underscore lawn underscore axes, it's always the axes that we're plotting into. My lawn axes name, I really made that lawn. Dot plot, so the method that's applying to that axes object, x comma y, and then my lawn axes name dot set title. This is a figure. And then plt dot show. Right, so again, we get the same plot. So just to make the point that when you're using the object-oriented approach, you start by running plot subplots to create a figure object and assign that to a variable name, and an axes object and assign that to a variable name. And then after that, you're using methods applied to typically the axes object. So you just keep using that same name to run the commands like dot plot and dot set title. So the difference between procedural and object-oriented approaches also explains why certain commands are different, like plt.title versus ax.setTitle. And I mean different in their names, right? So one's title and one is set title. So in the object-oriented approach, we're setting the title property of an axis object rather than just specifying the title of a plot. So that's why we're saying set title because we're setting a property of the object. And in fact, because it's a property, we can ask for that and see that by running ax.title. So now title is a property of the axes object, which is why we don't put parentheses after it, because we're not running a method. We're actually just asking for a property that's stored with that axes object. And the title you can see here, um, it's text. There's numbers, which we don't have to worry about what they mean right now but then the actual value of the title is a perfect correlation. That's what shows. Okay, so we're using set title because we're setting a property of that axis object and we're setting all these different properties. Whereas in the procedural approach, we're basically running commands that assign things to the plot, um, but it's not a plot object in the same sense. If we did that with plt.title, we're gonna get an error and that's because, well, not an error, but weird output because title is a function within the pyplot module. So plt isn't an axis object, it's a module. plt.title is a function, and so it tells us that's a function. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this short lesson. After this, we'll work more with object-oriented plotting in particular, and you'll see lots of different examples uh, of it and get more comfortable with it. So to summarize, matplotlib allows either procedural or object-oriented approaches to plotting. It's important to be aware of this and to be able to identify which one's being used, especially when you're trying to use online examples in your own code. 
because if you're writing object-oriented code, you may find online examples that are using the procedural approach. And if you just try and copy and paste their code, it won't work in conjunction with object-oriented approaches that you've already written. The procedural approach typically starts with the plt.plot command or function. And this is modified by additional functions that start with plt, like plt.title. In contrast, the object-oriented approach starts by defining a plot object with the plt.subplots function, and then assigning the result of this to fig and axe. Uh, so fig and axe are variables, and they become the objects that we work with. So the plot is then modified by using methods that apply to these axes objects, such as ax.setTitle. Procedural and object-oriented approaches are incompatible with each other. So trying to combine bits of code that use the different approaches may result in errors and frustration. I say may, probably inevitably. Uh, and finally, both procedural and object-oriented approaches are valid ways to use matplotlib. In general, the object-oriented approaches are more Pythonic and generally better choice when you're starting from scratch. All right, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.